Hello guys. Today we are doing a tutorial on the Mamasaurus, Nanosaurus, or whatever you want to put as the thing up here. Um, Peekaboo cup, which is also going to have a bunch of distressing done. Now, I've already glittered my cup. I've epoxied it. Um, I think I used a couple, three layers over this. And then I sanded it down. You want to get this literally as smooth as you possibly can. When you spray paint this, every little bump and stuff that's in here is go going to show through. But um, you can fix that a little bit when you do the distressing part. And I'll show you how. Um, I don't know if I have... This will probably be a problem spot right there if you can see that little spot. That'll be probably a little problem spot that'll give me an issue when I spray paint that will show up. Now the first thing I do, I have my design all cut out out of vinyl. Now um, you can use temporary vinyl or you can use permanent vinyl. I tend to use permanent vinyl because that's typically all I ever have. And then you're going to want to place everything right where you're going to want it. Now I did forget to turn my phone on silent so we may get Thing pop up from a text message or something. My phone's been going off all day like crazy. Oops. Now this vinyl I'm using is actually really old so it doesn't have the tackiness that it typically does. When it's not that tacky, it also makes it easier to um, peel off when it's time. Oops. I have to move that letter down right there a little bit. My thing with these curved cups, they're a little bit harder to line everything up right where you want them, but <clears throat> Take a move it down just a little bit and that'll help big time right there. There we go. Now these cups, when I'm laying my vinyl on them, I tend to make them not 100% perfect just for the fact that it's going to get distressed and it's a Jurassic Park cup. Now when I lay these, the um, first set of prints or scratch marks, I always do them so they're actually going off of the cup a little bit and go underneath it. That way it's just a little bit of the bottom showing. And then the footprints, I just randomly place in the back. I'd make them look like they're going up the back of the cup. So I'm going to put a set of paw prints right here. Then I'll put another set of paw prints probably right about here. And you don't want to put everything too close together because you also want to leave that room for when you do the distressing. set of scratch marks. Okay. 
and I will put them right about there. That way I'll leave a big spot to distress. Now that I have all my vinyl placed, now that all my vinyl is placed right where I want it, I'm going to take this and I'm going to spray paint it. Now when I do the spray paint on this one, I'm actually going to do it two colors. I'm going to do a coral color. Or light purple I haven't decided yet I'm gonna have to see which one matches I think the light purple may match a little bit better but I will see and then I'm also going to do a white over top of it so when I distress you'll actually see two different colors coming out of the district out and then you'll also see the glitter underneath it you want to make sure you get all those tiny little spots we did because now when I do this I normally typically use a um, a matte color or a flat the epoxy tends to stick better to that and you want to make sure your vinyl is stuck down really good because you don't want to get runs underneath it I'm going to get this spray painted and then I will come back and I will show you the next steps Okay, so we are now back. I got both coats of my colors put on here. I am just finishing up peeling my vinyl off. I actually decided to do this first just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see as I'm doing it and doing the distress part. Now I saved a piece of my transfer tape. It makes my vinyl mess a little bit easier to handle and keep in one spot. Now what you're gonna need for the next step is you're gonna need some acetone. I normally buy the big gallon jug of it that last me about a year but I've been starting to do a lot more of these distress cups so it's not last me as long and I also buy mine at Home Depot I cannot remember how much it was I had my husband pick it up for me he goes there more than I do so now on this one I used my first color was the coral color that I put in the photo. And I used a matte white. And then without thinking, I accidentally went over it with a gloss clear coat, which is fine. It won't hurt anything, but. Now all the stuff underneath is going to look dull see that when you go to epoxy that the shine will come back so the next step after you get all your vinyl peeled <clears throat> you're gonna want to have a paper towel um, typically I do have some q-tips on the side here to do a little bit of cleanup forgot to add those to the photo get this ass to open there we go sorry that took a 
a second longer than planned. Now I put a little bit of acetone on my paper towel and I find the first spot, I left this big empty spot to do a nice big distress area. Now when I do it, I take the paper towel and I start at the top and I wipe down. As you'll see, The white will be coming off and the coral color will show through like this. Now you want to keep wiping that until you're happy with what you have showing through. And I always wipe down in the downward motion. It makes it a lot easier. next thing I do also when I get like this that's where the q-tips come into play so I will take a q-tip get acetone on it and then I will take it like this and I'll clean up that area like this And that'll help right in there. Now I do have um, paper towel getting stuck to that. So I will also clean that up with we'll also clean that up like this. Now these cups tend to get messy when you're working on them. It happens, you don't worry about it too much. Now that I have that like that, I'm gonna take my cloth and I'm gonna wipe up. Just to help clean that area up some. Now you do go through a lot of paper towels when doing this. I have seen other people say that they use um, an old washcloth. I tried the old washcloth trick and I wasn't very happy with how it came out. I just tend to take my time when I'm doing it this way. And I go through and just clean it up with the q-tips like this okay so that part's cleaned up These are one of the harder cups I do and they tend to never come out perfect. And this is the first one I've actually done with coral underneath it. So this one is a trial and error. One thing I do do once I get my space kind of just about cleared out is I like to take my Q-tip and I go around, just kind of mark out the space where I plan on clearing all of the ink from. And 
and I ink the paint. So that's my area that I'm going to be working with. And then I just take and start wiping everything down back towards the rim. I know it doesn't look the prettiest now, but trust me, it will in the end. And I do tend to go through <clears throat> a lot of napkins when I do this paper towels I should say I do recommend you do this in a well ventilated area just because of how bad the acetone smells and the chemicals in it Normally I do do this outside, but since it's dark out right now, I cannot. And this is the only time I have to get this done tonight. See, it's starting to come cleaner. I know it doesn't look very pretty right now, but it will in the end. I try to use up all the acetone that I can off of the rag till it's dried out as possible. When I'm getting to my edge, I go like this and keep following it because I don't want to take all the white off of that edge. but I also don't want to take all of the coral off of it either. I go very slowly around it. To remember when you're doing these don't get frustrated with it um every single one that you do in this style will come out different no two of them will be alike Now I have tried using cotton balls with these. I do not recommend cotton balls. Cotton balls are probably the worst thing to use on these. All the fuzziness comes off of them and gets stuck to your cup. And it is a very big pain to try to clean it all off with. pretty much where I want it on this side now 
all I have to do is clean up this side. Totally out of those Q-tips. I knew I should have grabbed more before I came down here. So that edge I'll have to clean up a little bit better after. Now another thing I do do after I get this far. Is that lid? about right here and then I take some sandpaper which is wet or dry sandpaper it is P600 you rip off a small amount and I scuff up my edges like this Now when you do this, it gives it a little bit more of a worn look. You can see in some areas. You get the scratching in to give it more of a distressed look. That coral does look a little orange in the video, but. Now that part right there will have to get cleaned up a little bit more when I grab some more Q-tips. And I don't have any more down here tonight. So that'll be something that I'll do tomorrow. And I'll show that in the video how I do that. Now another thing that I like to do too when I'm doing these is I take the sandpaper and scratch it in some areas. Just to show the other color peeking through like this. Now you can also use the sandpaper to sand the paint off. That does tend to take longer.
Now I'm not pushing too hard because I don't want to take it all off. And I do want to have the coral sticking through in some spots just so it's kind of like a pop of color. And it'll help the glitter pop out in some areas too. Now, I tend to do that in more places than one. Um, up here is a good spot to do it. <clears throat> now, I have done a whole cup doing it this way. Actually, the first one I did, I did this way. Um, when I'm doing just a smaller area where I distress it, I only I use the acetone. I try not to use acetone too much. It does take longer sanding it, but I think you get a better color and look to it. around the rim you get some of the glitter that pops through it's all about your preference on how much you distress and how much paint you take off on how much glitter you want to show through now the glitter that I used on this one is actually really pretty and it's called um, boysenberry and I got it from Glitter Heart Company. It is a color shift glitter and it looks really awesome once it's done. Okay so you just want to continue this technique <clears throat> the whole way through the cup. Um, I do switch back and forth a lot between sandpapers. Now when I'm done doing this, <clears throat> I will wash it really good. And I wash with warm water and Dawn de soap. And then dry it immediately because the water spots will actually make it so your epoxy doesn't stick. <clears throat> and then you'll just have one big mess to deal with after that that you don't want to deal with. Now, I'm more keen on the sandpaper look. See that better like that. I like how it gives you the scratches and the more distressed effects, especially for a cup of this nature. that I do like this I always take the sandpaper around like this to scuff it up just to give it that I don't like to make them perfect when you're doing this way
it is actually a little bit harder to do it when I'm trying to hold it so you guys can see everything I'm doing. See, and I did get a little bit of scratches right there, which is fine. You're doing a, stress, a distress cup, so it won't matter. Now each one I distress a little bit differently than I did the last one. Um, I don't like each cup to come out exactly the same. That way each one's unique that my customers are getting. And after I wash this, before I put my first cup of epoxy on it, I will take a picture of this and send it to my customer to make sure she's happy with it. If not, I will take the acetone and I will wipe it all down and I will start all over again. So there's the start of that. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the uh, comments below. I will answer your questions back as quickly as I can. Um, I check about every day, one to two times a day to see if anybody has posted and or asked questions. Um, this week I'm also working on a tutorial to show you how to do one of the buffalo plaids. And those that is also going to be a distressed one, but I will show the whole glitter process first. That one will take me a little bit longer to get done. Just because of the amount of work that goes into it. It's a little bit better cleaned up if you can see that. I think I may though go a little bit further on the edge right here. Clean that up a little bit better. I will not recommend though to accidentally cover your cup with a clear coat afterwards. Um, the matte spray paint comes off a lot easier than gloss does when you're doing these. I have learned that the hard way. So try your best to use the mat. That will help out. I think the one I use says ultra matte on it. I did include pictures of those. Now I will add a 
picture to the end of this video so you can see the final pro product. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future videos that are coming up. And I will be starting to work on planning some lives to post. We're doing some lives on YouTube. I just haven't figured out when or what will be a good time to be doing that. We do, I am planning lives once a week over on in our Facebook group, which is um, Mama Bears. You are welcome to come over, join us, ask questions. If there's anything else that you guys have questions with when it comes to doing one of these, please feel free to ask me at any time. I also have our email address included in there and our shop link included in there. And I will also post a link to the company that I buy my glitter from. And thank you. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will be having another video ready for you in a few days.